Misi saya kali ini adalah mengenai salah satu sejarah pahit negeri Sarawak. Setelah konflik antara kaum berjaya diselesaikan semasa pemerintahan Brook, terdapat satu peristiwa yang melanda dunia pada tahun 1940-an yang menyebabkan wilayah seperti Sarawak turut terjejas sama. Ini telah mengubah nasib penduduk-penduduk di negeri Sarawak. Saya Tony Yusof, anak Sarawak, Bumi Kenyalang. Sebelum saya mencecah usia 50, saya telah membuat satu bucket list untuk mengenali asal-usul negeri kelahiran saya dengan menerukai beberapa lokasi bersejarah yang berkaitan dengan pembentukan negeri ini. Ini adalah perjalanan saya di dalam Pejalai Kami Orang. Cuaca baik di Kuching hari ini. Memang best kalau bawa motor. <tapi>, Tapi kali ini, saya malas. Saya nak naik bas pula. Untuk misi saya hari ini, saya nak berjumpa dengan seorang yang mahir tentang sejarah penaklukan Jepun di Kuching. Jom, ikut saya. Mr. Edward Mansell. Yes. How are you, Tony? I'm good. It's an good. honor. Are you ready for the tour? Yes, I am. Morning. Come. Come. After you. Pagi, Bang. Morning. I'm excited. This is my first time on a hydrogen bus, yeah, Mr. Edward. Great. Just call me Edward. Edward. Just call me Edward. Sure, right. sure, sure. Were you born and raised in Kuching? I was born in Cebu and I raised, was raised in Kuching. I went to school in Kuching and I worked in Kuching and I retired in Kuching. Oh, wow. I left school in 1961 and I joined the Agriculture Department. Agricultural Department? Uh, because I love outdoor life. But you seem to know the occupation history like the back of your hand. I was born towards the end of the Second World War, so I've got good memories. Oh, wow. Bukan senang nak dapat peluang mengenali individu seperti Edward. Lebih-lebih lagi apabila beliau sanggup meluangkan masa seharian beliau dengan saya untuk mengimbau kembali sejarah di Bandar Kuching ini. So Edward, where are we making our first stop today? Uh, we are making our first stop at the post office just uh, in front of this bus. Here we are. Yeah, come. come. So, Tony, this is the uh, post office. Before the war, was the headquarters of the um, Sarawak Defence Force. Okay. People who work in the Defence Force, yeah. and they have a lot of documents. When these people knew the Japanese were coming, they burned all the vital documents. Right. And then when they came out from the office, two Europeans and two Chinese staff were seized by the Japanese, and they were uh, asked to sit in the middle of the road okay. uh, for two hours. And what happened to them after that? And after that, they were marched to the Astana. They were kept there for almost 48 hours without food, without drink. And after that, they were marched to the uh, police station. So let's go to the police station now. Come, come. So this is the police station, huh? right? Yeah, but it doesn't look like this. During the war time, it was grey in colour. The but, last yeah, place yeah. where one liked to visit. The European prisoners who were captured and they were put into the Astana for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, they were marched to the police station to be interrogated by the Kempitai. And uh, the Kempitai has got a full list of those people who works with the government. So how did you know that? Let me take you to the place, very interesting place, to explain all this. Cool, right? Thank you. Yeah. 
So Tony, this is Kaiju Lane and uh, it's located behind the police station. And before the war, this used to be the um, notorious Kuching Red Light District. Red Light District right behind the police station. Right, right. <laughs> you heard me right. Huh? Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. So the European officers having a drink in Slough Club, they become mm -hmm. very tipsy and they come here for a good massage. And they were given sake, the rice wine, right. to loosen the tongue. Of course. And then the Japanese girls were trained. Uh, spies, so they extract as much as information right, uh, right, right. from these uh, ladies, and the ladies transmit the information to the Japanese uh, espionage center. Wait, there was a Japanese espionage center? Yes, right here. I'll show you the way. Please. Siapa sangka? Pihak Jepun telah melakukan perisikan mereka sebelum kucing ditakluk tentera Jepun pada tahun 1941. Dahsyat juga perempuan-perempuan perisik masa itu. Banyak juga kerja mereka. Mungkin inilah overtime bagi mereka. So Tony, this is the uh famous number 11 in the street. This was the uh, Japanese espionage center. Oh, this was it? Yes, this was it. So how did they communicate with the HQ in Japan at the time? So the information obtained from the two ladies, massage girl, mm -hmm. they were sent here, and the message were transmitted by Morse code directly to the Japanese military headquarters at Tokyo. Right, right, right. 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 And could this also be the administrative center at the time? Uh, no, 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 no. This is uh, too small for that. Huh? Of course, right. So right, the administrative right. center is where the old courthouse is. The courthouse? Yeah, ah, we're okay. going there right, right, right. Come, come, come. Right. Yeah. Hey, So, Tony, uh, I want to show you this Japanese building and so-called Japanese building today mm -hmm. because it was built by the local people under Japanese architect. Uh, they occupied the um, old courthouse mm -hmm. and this meant for the administration block. I gather that the Japanese army were based here for the whole, the entire duration of the war. Yes, from 1942 to 1945. Uh, three and three quarter years of Japanese ah. occupation. Yeah. So what's next? Uh, what's next? We're going to the uh, famous prisoner of war camp in the whole of Borneo Island. Mm -hmm. There's the Batu Lintang Camp, also known as the Lintang Camp. This camp uh, housed about 2,400 prisoners of war, men, women and children. I never knew that. Yes, wow. very interesting place. Shall we go? Right. Banyak juga kisah mengenai pihak Jepun yang berlaku di tapak utama di Bandar Kuching. Saya tak sabar nak ke destinasi seterusnya selepas apa yang Edward terangkan dekat saya tentang lokasi itu. Edward nak membawa saya ke sebuah bangunan yang pernah menjadi kem tawanan perang semasa penaklukan Jepun. Tapi sebelum itu, kita singgah dulu di satu lokasi yang berkait dengan Perang Dunia Kedua. Jom. So Tony, this uh, one of the interesting uh, part of the Second World War, uh -huh. and this is uh, the air raid shelter. Uh, not only here we have it, but also in Miri and Cebu as well. Come, um, let's have a closer look. So this is obviously built before the yes, war, right? Built before the war. the war. That's right. Walaupun saya dilahirkan di sini dan melalui kawasan ini banyak kali, saya tak pernah perasan bahawa tempat ini adalah tempat peninggalan sejarah semasa perang. Mungkin banyak bom telah dijatuhkan di kawasan ini semasa itu.
This morning, I was telling you about Batu Lintang, mm -hmm. and uh, here we are. I'm embarrassed to say that I've never been in the campus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a beautiful campus, though. Oh, yeah, it's a new one. It started off as a sort of a military camp. Yeah, it was built specifically for the Second Battalion, 15 Punjab Regiment. Punjab Regiment. Punjab Regiment, part of the British Army, mm. and they were here to defend Sarawak, right, against the Japanese invasion. And uh, when it was taken over by the Japanese, they turned this into the prisoner of war and internist camp. Meaning? Meaning, the prisoner of war were men in uniform, the internees were civilians. So, civilians. prisoner of war and civilians lumped together, together in the same place. place. Which is not normal. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, can I see any remnants oh, yeah, of the past? Oh, yeah, we, we can uh, I introduce to my good friend, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Habib. Oh, sure. Right. Come. 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 Looking forward. Right. Well, Tony. To answer your question just now, let mm -hmm. us meet uh, my good friend, Dr. Habib, who is a senior lecturer in history in this institute. Eh? Hi, Doctor. Hi, Atani. How are you? Mm. Kita ada beberapa tempat menarik di uh, kampus Batu Lintang. Mm -hmm. uh, contohnya, uh, War Memorial Museum. Sebelum saya bawa uh, Encik Tony ke museum, War Memorial Museum kami, saya nak tunjukkan ada satu tempat yang tersembunyi di dalam kampus Batu Lintang. Okey, jom kita so, tengok. Jom kita pergi. Okey, come. Pergi dulu, Doktor. Okay. Ini Mr. Tony. Hmm. Inilah satu-satunya barrack Punjabi yang tinggal sehingga pada hari ini. Jadi uh, barrack ini bermula pada tahun 1939. Hmm. Apabila tentera British menghantar batalion kedua tentera Punjabi yang asalnya dihantar ke Miri, selepas selesai menghapus telaga minyak, mereka dihantar di sini, berpusat di sini. Dan berapa, berapa ramai itu yang diletakkan di sini? Okey, biasanya satu batalion ini sekitar 600 orang. Tapi di sini lengkap satu batalion jumlahnya 1,000 orang. 1,000 di sini saja? Sebenarnya banyaklah, banyak tapi lah. tinggal satu oh, okay, ini okay, saja okay, yang okay, tinggal. Faham, faham. Yeah. Okay. Melihat struktur bangunan yang lama sebegini yang masih berdiri, saya berasa bangga juga dengan usaha untuk mengekalkan bangunan bersejarah di negeri ini. Batalion. Does that mean they were all Punjabis? They come from a province called Punjab, yeah. like Sarawak. Huh? So in that province, uh, majority are Punjabi, but not all are Punjabi. Punjab. The, 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 that the is place. why it's called Punjab Regiment, not Regiment. Punjabi Regiment. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Okay, Doctor, adakah ini struktur ataupun pembinaan asalnya? Okey, ini adalah struktur yang telah direnovate hmm. uh, melalui Colombo Plan eh, 1958. Struktur yang asal masa kata atap nipah dulu tidak ada. Tetapi hmm. masih ada lagi bahagian apa struktur bangunan yang asal. Okey, ini adalah ammunition dump ataupun tempat penyimpanan peluru dan senjata tentera Punjabi yang berpangkalan di Kem Batu Lintang. Dan sebab itu kita melihat lokasi barrack dia tidak jauh daripada sini. Okay. Sebab senjata dan bom tidak boleh disimpan di barrack. Dia mesti disimpan di tempat yang selamat. Jadi sangat sesuai lah tempat penyimpanan peluru tidak terlalu jauh dan selamat untuk mereka. Perlu ada jarak keselamatan dia. Ya, ya. Semasa lawatan saya, ada juga yang perasan tentang kehadiran saya di sini. Bagus juga dapat berjumpa dengan orang-orang muda di Sarawak yang sedang giat melalui latihan perguruan. Apabila dengan mereka, saya teringat balik masa saya di universiti dulu.
saya nak ucapkan selamat berjuang. Mereka inilah masa depan Sarawak. Hari ini saya dapat melawat tempat peninggalan bersejarah yang berkait rapat dengan penaklukan pihak Jepun di Kuching. Saya sekarang di Batu Lintang bersama Encik Edward Mansell yang mahir tentang sejarah penaklukan ini. Selepas melihat dua lokasi yang ditunjukkan oleh Dr. Habits, kami kini menuju ke lokasi terakhir. Nasib baik perjalanan tak jauh dan nasib baik hari tak hujan lagi. Ya, ya lucky. Ini adalah Mini Museum Campus Batu Lintang. Hmm. Di sinilah kita menyimpan semua bahan-bahan yang kita jumpai lah di dalam tapak batu lintang ini. Museum yang menarik dan paling menarik pada saya ialah dia punya motif pada dinding-dinding. Dia macam motif seni orang dulu. Ya, betul. Hmm. Okay, silakan masuk. Cik. Banyak artefak di dalam museum ini perlu diceritakan oleh seorang pakar. Dr. Habits memperkenalkan rakan sekerjanya, Dr. Emizul, yang tahu lebih lanjut tentang bahan pameran di sini. Silakan. Terima kasih, Dr. Okay, terima kasih. hasil karya tahanan perang di kem tahanan Batu Lintang ya. ditulis dengan berbagai sumber kertas yang ada oleh FC Bell salah seorang yang terpukul pada waktu itu waktu itu semasa dalam tahanan dan penulisan ini dibuat secara sulit lah, untuk memenuhi masa lapang buku ini ya. masih dalam keadaan bentuk asal ya. Reksi Bell ni dia, dia tahanan perang lah. Jadi ya, masa ya. dalam tahanan tu dia menghabiskan masanya dengan Betul. menulis. Betul. Contohnya macam macam orang menulis uh, jurnal lah. Ya, dia meluahkan Luah. apa yang hmm. pengalaman sepanjang dalam apa tahanan hmm. perang tu lah. At the same time, there is one prisoner of war who was from Sabah. He has sent here, and he has got a big collection of books, right. which he put in the crate. And the crate was sent to this place, and Colonel Suga, the, com the commander of this camp, uh, allowed them to study privately in two or three at night. The study to keep them safe, sane right. uh, from right. getting mad. Yeah? Right. Right. So they study among themselves. So at the end of the uh, war, they issue a certificate, which you see there. Sijil Underground University. Betul, Sijil Underground University di mana uh, mereka yang dah menyelesaikan pembelajaran mereka akan dapat Sijil Underground University merupakan unofficial punya sijil lah, oh. eh, bagi sesiapa yang... Jadi masa dalam dah... tahanan tu digunakan dengan sangat baik yeah, sekali sehingga begitulah. mendapatkan satu degree yeah. apabila dah habis, betul, betul, habis betul. pengajian. Bahan-bahan sejarah di sini dijaga dengan baik oleh institusi pengajian ini. Nilai bahan-bahan ini patut dihargai oleh generasi sekarang. Memandangkan tempat ini juga adalah tempat mengasah bakal-bakal guru. Here, this is the war memorial dedicated to those prisoner of war and internees who died during the uh, detention in this camp. And uh, this camp is actually 50 acres mm. and is divided into nine compounds. Okay. So okay. each compound is being fenced up so they cannot speak to each other right. only once a week. What do you mean? What do you mean? Compound? Like different, different, different categories of prisoners. Many of them died here because of malnutrition. And we're talking about what kind of numbers? Uh, the full capacity for this camp is 3,000. And the and ones who perished, for how many? Almost 1,000 that, that oh, okay. perished here because of uh, lack of food. Yeah. 
Tony, after this, I'm going to show you uh, another memorial, which is very close to my heart. Let's ah, okay. go. Okay. So, Tony, can you guess what plant is this? I know the local name for it. Yes. Daun Bandung, na. Yeah, Bandung. It's uh, cassava or tapioca. Ah, tapioca, yes. yeah. Why yes, is this yes. so important during the war? Because um, this was about the only food they ate. Yeah. So when they plant paddy, half will be taken by the Japanese free of charge. So they have to supplement their diet. They can plant this anyway around their house. Right. Bandung right, right, right. and sweet potatoes as well. Yes, so this yes, become yes. a survival crop. That's mm -hmm. why it's very important. We must remember. Saya kemudiannya dibawa ke tapak ini. Apabila Edward memberitahu betapa bermaknanya tapak ini bagi beliau, saya tertanya-tanya juga apa yang dimaksudkannya. So Tony, this is the uh, Long Nawang uh, War Memorial uh -huh. and dedicated to those uh, government servant who died uh, at Long Nawang. So the story goes like this. When the Japanese landed in Kuching on the 24th of uh, December, mm -hmm. 1941, uh, a group from Cebu under the resident Andrew McPherson, mm -hmm. together with about 40 Europeans, they escaped to the other side of the border, a place called Long Nawang. To go to Long Nawang, they have to cross the rapid. Right, right, uh, right. Treacherous rapid for three weeks in the river, river mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. And the last part was uh, to trek across the jungle. Right, uh, right. Took them about a week in the malaria infested jungle before they reached uh, Long Nawang. Right. And many of them contracted malaria, but none of them died. So they stayed in Long Nawang, garrison uh, for eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, then sometime towards the end of August 1942. Mm -hmm. uh, Japanese came from the other side of the border and massacred them all, men, women and children. None survived. One of the victims was my late father, who died together with uh, the rest of the party. I see. Yes. So that's why you say it's yes. close to your heart. Yes, okay, of course, of course. Now I get so it. So before we end, mm -hmm. uh, let us uh, spend a, a minute of silence sure. to remember those people. Terseduh juga bila mendengar tentang apa yang berlaku terhadap mendiang bapa Edward semasa perang dahulu. Patutlah tapak ini amat bermakna bagi beliau. Kesengsaraan semasa perang memang tidak boleh dielakkan. Ramai nyawa terkorban dan kesedihan itu masih boleh dirasai oleh kaum keluarga dan sahabat handai mangsa sehingga ke hari ini. That will be all for today. Uh, it's a rather sad ending to a otherwise a great story that you told me today. A great journey. I've learned so much about our history. Thank you so much. It's all been a pleasure. It's and been a pleasure. Too, huh? right. Thank you. And Thanks, Edward. Come, come. Misi saya untuk mengenali lebih banyak lagi sejarah tentang penaklukan Jepun di Sarawak tidak habis di sini. Sila ikuti perjalanan saya di dalam episod seterusnya.